Isn't this absolutely beautiful camellia in all its glory? Look at all of these large, beautiful blooms. Look at this. Look at how many are so close together. Can you see that? This one just came off. Absolutely beautiful. So whether you're growing them in flower beds or you grow them in containers, today we're gonna to take a look at how to care for these wonderful plants. So come along with me if you've never been here before. My name is Marlene. Beautiful. So before we take a look at those nine things that is good to know about camellia, let's first of all take a look at some fun facts about this wonderful plant. Some call it camellia, some say camellia. Either way, this plant originates from the Far East. So countries like China, Japan, and the Himalayas would be where it started out. And of course, came over to other countries. It actually is a member of the tea family. Yes, guys, believe it or not, it is closer to the tea that you drink, your green teas and so on, than it is to a rose, even though it kind of looks a lot like a rose. There are two main types. You have Camellia sasanqua and Camellia japonica. Sasanqua blooms in the late fall to early winter, while the japonica, they, those bloom in late winter to early spring. This is actually the state flower of Alabama. And there are people who wax them you know, as a hobby and there are many societies that do that. Now the first thing to bear in mind is the growing zones. So in the US they typically grow in zones, zones seven to nine. In like say the UK for example, they grow in zones, usually the southwestern area of that country. Sometimes you may see them in Canada, but areas like Vancouver is typically where you would see them because you know, that's kind of the climate that they like. Of course, it can be grown in pots like you see right here, or they can be grown in flower beds. There are over 220 species of this wonderful plant and many, many different varieties. Now let's take a look at where to plant them. That is very critical. You want to make sure you're planting camellia that they're in a shaded area. You can see they're right off our porch right here. So it does offer a little bit of sheltering. You can plant them under large trees, you know, high up that offer dappled sunlight, which means that, you know, a little sunlight comes through now and then, but not beaming down on them all the time because you want to have these wonderful blooms that you're seeing here. Now, if you put them, like, say, in the center of your garden and they get boxed to and fro by the wind, especially harsh, you know, the wind from winter, that's not good for them. They get leaf scorch, you know, it burns them and, you know, it causes, you know, dropping off your buds and all of that. We'll talk about winterization further down in the video, but just put it in place where it has some sheltering. A little nook sometimes is a really good place, but part sun to dappled sunlight would be ideal for this plant to get the best results. So do bear that in mind. And if you're going to put them in pots, you want to make sure that you're putting them in large containers, you know, like pots that are made of ceramic, pots that are made of metal, pots that are made of, you know, plastic would be ideal. Terracotta potters, preferably if they're sealed because, you know, they tend to dry out a little bit and this plant likes a reasonable amount of moisture and it will do so, so well for you under those conditions. So the next we're going to take a look at now is when to plant them. Now, these were actually on sale in my garden center in December. And typically you'll get plants and you plant them when they are available there. This one, the price wasn't bad. This is one and a half gallons for $29.98. So a pretty reasonable price. The best time to plant them though typically is in the springtime, early spring. And bear in mind that when you're planting this, you want to make sure that when you take it out of the pot, that the top of the soil that they're in is level with the bed that you're putting it in or the larger container. And as far as, you know, the size of the hole goes in terms of the width, you want to make sure it's at least twice that of the plant so it can spread out this plant though it doesn't like to have a lot of dirt dumped on top of it so just sprinkle lightly and that should be sufficient for this plant now as far as watering the plant goes especially in the first two years when you've planted it you want to make sure that you are giving it an adequate amount of water so that way it's going to hold up really well especially in the summer months you want to pay very close attention to that and mulching is very good it's a great idea to put mulch around it I'd say maybe about an inch to two inches of mulch. But an important fact when you're putting mulch on most trees is to back it off. This is a little bit messy here because we need to clean it up. But see how we have a little bit of soil between the mulch and the, the, the tree trunk? That's what you want to do because you don't want to have it smothered too much, this plant especially, or insects, you know, invading your plant coming up on it. So that's a good thing to do. And just to say that, you know, I'd really love if you would hit the subscribe button and tap on the notification bell so you can follow along, along with me on all of my wonderful topics. And I do lots of fruits and veggies too, so stick around for those. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look at how to feed these plants. Typically what you want to do is not to feed them when they're blooming, but you'll want to feed them after they have bloomed. So that way it gets, you know, all the energy it needs. It goes into the leaves and it keeps, keeps them strong and healthy for the next season. And I'll link this food. You can use either of these that you like or any other one you prefer because they really like acidic soil. And this is good for acidic, you know, loving plants. Mildly acidic, of course. So you'll see that in the description box below. So be sure to check that out if you get a chance to do so. You can go to your local, you know, garden center as well too. They may be available there, but always good to take a look at that. Next, we're going to take a look at is pruning. That's number six. If you had winter damage like we had here, you want to go in and trim out those branches. Sometimes you maybe just want to thin it out a little bit because it might be a little dense and it's good for them to breathe a little bit. But if they're looking damaged like this from the winter, you really will really want to go in and take these off. And you basically want to do this, do this after the plant, you know, have to have gotten your blooms out of there. Or if you wanted to shape it, I would say, make sure you're not shaping the plant like, say, in the fall when the buds would have already set in. We'd right after they bloom so that way you won't have any issues because it does come on, it blooms on old wood. Next thing is winterizing. Very, very important because we typically grow these in cooler areas. You'll want to make sure that you're winterizing your plant because... You know, typically if you go, I'd say maybe like 20, you know, their body is pretty much okay Fahrenheit. But once it starts to drop below those temperatures, you really will want to go in and protect them. Or even if a hard freeze is coming in at maybe say 32, 30 and so on, it's not a bad idea. This year right here you can see how many we lost. So the following year, you know, which is just last season we went in because we had a really rough winter coming in. We dropped to about 10 degrees Fahrenheit quite a few times, you know. In, su in succession we knew it was coming so we were prepared so here my husband is going in and I'll, um, I had a video out specifically for how to protect these plants you can always take a look just to show you what it looks like here and these are available online as well and you basically go in and you take it and you cover over your plant hopefully you know um, it's large enough to cover your plant or you may have to get a larger size depending on what you're using but you do this, you know, before that weather sets in, you know, maybe like the day before and you go ahead and you cover it like we did here. And that's going to protect it from those, you know, harsh drafts. If it's set, you know, the buds are set. And the main thing to do is to make sure you're going to go in and give it a nice good soak. And you can even go out a little further than we did here because you want to go to the, the drip line of the plant. The drip line is basically how far out the branches extend because the roots go out as far as you see, you know, the leaves branching out that whole canopy how it is shaped so you want to hit that spot and make sure it goes all the way out and they get a nice good soak so you can have wonderful blooms like these because this was this this, this current season is what we got here and this is a result of us protecting this plant you know the front was not it didn't produce as many because they had some drop there because you know it's more exposed and the leaves you can see they're a little bit you know like olive olive green in color because a little cold came on them so next time we'll go ahead and um Give them a little bit more water and just you know make sure we get everything going good there so you can see how it is the front was a little bit more um you know suffered a little bit more than the back and this is why protecting these plants is so so important now as far as the flowers dropping this is a natural part of camellia because camellia you know they don't wait until the flowers fade out completely like some plants and then they drop or they just dry up on the stalk they actually fall so if you see that happening it's normal don't worry too much about it it's just something that this plant does you enjoy them while they last usually about two weeks or so we'll have flowers on the tree next and maybe into three weeks or so but just enjoy them while they're there and when they fall you just pick them up and clear them off to prevent the spread of pests and diseases but you know and it smells really nice too depending on the species that you got so i'm just showing you right here how much we collected and again this is just how this plant is this is basically what it does and that's why some people wax them to give it that longevity now let's take a look at pests and diseases so right here you'll see that there's some little eggs that were laid on here so if you see anything looking like that do not hesitate don't wait until they hatch out as soon as you spot them just go in and get a clean pair of pruners like i have here now these are linked below for you in the description box so you can get that or something similar to it and just take them out and try to disturb them as little as possible when you're pulling these off over here now you see like we had some kind of like spider mites on here so we had to go in again and take these out so just make sure that you know after you do this that you're cleaning your um your pruning shears with rubbing alcohol i like to do that because that helps to prevent the spread of diseases you just go in and you take your time you know go in and just trim them out and again this would be after the plant has bloomed 
you just go ahead and take them out and then you make sure you have you know maybe like a plastic bag or something you know trash bags whatever and you put those in there because again whatever is in there you don't want it to be spreading over onto your other plants Def definitely not to be put in the compost heap because again we don't want to have the spread of diseases so you can see me making sure i took my time here and got them in and then that took care of that now as far as the leaves go sometimes you may see that your leaves are turning yellow it's a natural part of the changing process but if it's happening too much and especially if the, the veins are green and the leaves are yellow themselves that's chlorosis and they will need to get an intake of magnesium and that comes from epsom salt as you're seeing right here and all you and i use this um, um quite often as for my plants to give them that boost so basically what you do make sure that it's fragrance free and i'll link this one below for you as well if you can get it if you wanted to get it online or any other brand you prefer make sure it's fragrance free though and you put two tablespoons of it in to two gallons of water and i typically just mix it out in my um my watering can right there and then you just go ahead and you water generously you know around the plant and i typically do it like maybe like every other week for just a couple of weeks until I feel like the plant, you know, has been revised. And you can do the same thing for tomatoes. And I did this past video, I'll link that at the end. You can go ahead and take a look to see how that works. Now, if you see anything looking like the little white flies like this, just go ahead and spray them with insecticidal soap and that should take care of it. So we have little pests here and there that come around, but we have different ways of dealing with them. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at propagation, guys. You know, how to propagate your camellias. You want to make sure that you're looking for a stem that has a little, you know, but that's going to come up at the top not when it's blooming you don't want to mess with the flower blooms or anything after it has bloomed is typically when you'd go in you know so like these opening right here you don't want to mess with those at all you want one that doesn't have a flower on there it just has a little part that's about to burst out and you get one that's go back up maybe like about say six inches from the top and then you just snip it off and again with clean pruners of course you just take them out and then you can go ahead and um do your propagation which we'll take a look at in a second but you know be sure to give this video a thumbs up you know if you're enjoying it so far and tell me if you think you would try to you know grow camellias or if you see them in your area at all so i got three different ones here i'm going to test it in two different ways we had it soaking in some water of course because it is woody you don't want to make sure you want to make sure it does not dry out on you because that's something that you don't want to happen you know because your plant is going to be dehydrated and it's not going to perform very well so what you'll do is you'll go in, you know, and these are the nodes right here. You see that maybe about six nodes or so, maybe five, no less. And the internode is the long part that's in between them. You just pop the leaves off gently, just take them off. And we're going to go ahead and take these off until we have just two left at the top. You just take your time and go ahead and do that. And then you go ahead and stick it in some water. I tried that option. So it works that way. If you have rooting powder, you can always use that for your um, the ones you're going to put in soil. Because I did two in the soil and I did one in water. I've heard that, um, and this is just something I heard. I'm probably going to try it out. And you can try it if you like, if you you know have a lot of um, trimmings to spare. But you can go in and they say add a little bit of sugar to the water. And that actually helps the plant to root fast. If you ever heard anything about that before, let me know in the comments. If you've ever tried using sugar to have your plants root and how it works i tend to stay away from rooting powder i try to do it naturally but sometimes you know if it's not fast enough then that's something that you may have to consider now bear in mind that this plant you know it takes a while to root because it's not like a standard you know just like the soft tissues is tough you know it's woody so it does take a little bit longer once you've dug the hole like with a knife or something now you just go ahead and press the soil in because they do need to have contact they need to feel the soil around them not heavy clay of course you know good potting soil or good garden soil but just press it in a little bit so they can feel that contact so it will encourage them to root and then you want to go ahead and get them watered and make sure that they don't dry out you know because that's very important for them so let's go ahead and take a look to see how they're doing. You can see they're holding up. This was like um, two weeks after. You can see they still look nice and fresh. And I just put these spots near to the house. So when it rains, a little bit of the rain would fall in it and they'll be okay. Because again, you want to make sure it does not dry out. So this is how they're looking right here. They're still looking nice and healthy. And this is the one that's in the water. See, this one is a step ahead because if you notice that the little bud's at the top, 
it's burst open and you have little leaves that are coming out of this one right here. you can go back and look to see how it was you can see where we're coming from at this point there were no roots in there yet but after i made this video i am seeing one little root coming out so we know that it's you know the process is coming along so i'm quite quite happy about that and you can always give them to neighbors and friends if you like to now as far as um the bonus goes just bear in mind guys that when you have camellia for the first two years you probably won't get a lot of blooms you know just be patient my friend patricia from patricia and Coop's channel she was saying that she didn't she wasn't sure she's was gonna get, get a lot of blooms because it's still pretty young so give them some time to come up guys just like anything else they need that maturity so give them a little extra time if they're younger and they'll come up for you just water them feed them don't have them you know like waterlogged because plants don't like that anyway unless they're made to grow in water so let them dry out a little bit between your waterings you know mulch them in the summertime so that way you know that they're not gonna dry out too much but dry out a little bit so they can breathe and you'll have healthy wonderful blooms and you're gonna fall in love with this plant i promise you you really really will so you know we really enjoyed it we look forward to what's gonna happen next as far as you know um, what else we have in store for this season be sure to stick around we have fruits and veggies coming and you'll do that by way of subscribing and tapping the notification bell so you can know when we're coming on and you can check and see what we're doing i'm so excited about the backyard what's going to happen around in my veggies this year guys so make sure you stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching and i certainly hope to see you in the next video take care